and gentlemen, welcome to the Views from the John podcast, starring comedian John Erez, co-host Josh Ryder. Now, put your hands together for your hosts, everybody, John Erez and Josh Ryder. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the Views from the John podcast, episode 72 to be specific. I'm your host, John Ares, and this is my co-host, Josh Ryder. <laughs> A little delay there, but Yeah, I was waiting for you to introduce me, maybe try to trip you up. I thought that was the wrong thing to do. <laughs> I thought you don't want the echo. Yeah, but you always introduce me anyway. So. You want to try it again? No, I was used to it. Want to do a second take? If you want. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm John Erez, and welcome to the Views from the John podcast, episode 72. I'm John Erez. Hey, Josh Ryder. And this is... You fucked that up, <laughs> Yeah, we're all over the fucking place. Welcome, everybody. We got a great one for you this week. Yeah, as opposed to last week, right? I hope so. Holy crap. All right, <laughs> let's see if this time we roll the dice. We can't get it right. Let's jump right in. I gotta tell you something, hey, before we before we do anything. Uh-oh. Uh oh! Here we go. I drive all the back road, back roads here. Yeah, to get here. yeah. I must have saw ten. You know, it's dark outside, so all, everybody's lights are on inside, so you can see. But you've noticed how light still. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but it's still dark out. Yeah, I'm just saying that. Like at the beginning of winter, it was pitch dark at 4:30. Yeah. Now you can still kind of see towards six. Yeah, a little bit. All right, go go on. I saw like ten Christmas trees still up. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm like, come on. Whoa. T- ten? Yeah, fully lit up. That's a little late. Little ornaments still on it. The star still up, you know? Now, I've heard of people... Well, there's definitely people around here that will actually leave their Christmas lights on the house up year-round. Yeah, those are, I've seen plenty of those, too. Oh, yeah. Here. But, you know, I don't know if that's a combination of laziness, or it is laziness, or it's just smart, because you don't have to do it year after year. I have no clue, man. But leaving your Christmas tree up until it's... What is it, mid-February? Yeah. It's it, a little late. Yeah, it looked like uh, it was Christmas Eve. Man. I used to think taking ours down on New Year's Day was kind of late. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, okay. Did you have a tree this year? No, I didn't. Okay, well, let, you've had trees before, right? Yeah. When, when do you think's the right time to get a Christmas tree? Like, what's a good time? A little bit after Thanksgiving. Yeah, I think that like the day after Thanksgiving, I think, is a good day to put it up. Yeah. It gets you right in the mood. And then I think taking it down New Year's Day is the appropriate time. Yeah. Like a week after Christmas. It's always depressing taking it down because I hate when the season comes to an end. <laughs> That's literally what makes the winter tolerable for me. Yeah. Is as tragic as this past Christmas was for me and the and the one before it. Yeah. I still love Christmas time. It gets lonely for me. I don't know this year it was for you. But I still love the holidays. Yeah. They'll always be special to me. Right. So anyways, that's... that's, cr- that's that, blew, that blew my mind, though, when that, I saw it. That's blowing my mind, dude. I've never <laughs> heard of somebody keeping a Christmas tree this long. Yeah. Ever. They're still out there, man. They can't be real, then. Because they'd be bare. The pines would have... Like, the friggin' needles would have fell out of it by yeah. now, right? Yeah. I'd imagine, yeah. Jesus. All right, dude. You know what I gotta do? You know what I gotta do? I gotta bring up our conversation from last night to share with the people. What, what we? Do, do, oh, is yep. this when you called me and woke me up? Yep. Now we're gonna play dumb, like he doesn't no, know I what's going on. I'm not okay. playing dumb. Okay. Let me take you back to last night. Okay. Uh, it's no big secret that you, this podcast. You woke me up. That's what happened. It's okay. Let me back up. <laughs> Let me tell the people the story. It's no big secret. This podcast usually comes out on a Thursday. We usually record it on a Wednesday, yep. and we usually have a pre-production meeting on a Tuesday, the day before. And what is a pre-production meeting for those of you who aren't into this kind of stuff? Well, we, you know, any kind of show has a pre-production meeting where the hosts sit down, and we kind of go over what we're going to talk about and right, right. all that kind of stuff. So uh, Tuesday night, Josh is supposed to give me a call because his life is a lot busier than mine. Oh. So I'm looking at the clock last night, and it's like 10 of 8. And I know you go to bed super early because you're up early. And I'm like, I think he forgot. And so I'm going to text him. 
<laughs> and roll the dice that he won't get that angry at me that I texted him. Yeah. And then, uh, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes later, my phone's lighting up and it's Josh. Yeah. And uh, you called me from bed. Yeah. You were in bed. Yep. You had already gone to bed. Yeah. Probably rolled over, saw my text and said, shit, I missed the pre-production meeting. Right? <laughs> okay. So then you gave me a call and we started to have our pre-production meeting as Josh is half asleep. Yeah. And not really giving a shit about the meeting, right? Yeah. I've been I've been working hard, long yeah. hours. The guy had a long day yeah. and now he's in bed and we're having a pre production meeting. Half so naked. So, you know, I really try to handle all the back end stuff on the show. So all Josh has to do is like the rock star move. All he's gotta do is just show up to the studio. Yeah. He walks in, everyone goes, Ja you know, and then he sits down, we put earphones on him and just, he just you know just like old times. Man. Yeah. And then when the show's <laughs> done, he walks outside, he gets into his limmer. Yeah, his limmer. Limmer. That was supposed to be limo. That's he a gets good word. into his limo or he gets into his Uber and then he goes home. That's all he's got to do. Yeah. Me, when he leaves, my night just begins because I got to start post production and all the editing and shit, right? Yeah, you're good at it. So, anyways, you're good at all that stuff. Josh agreed a long time ago that we had to have this pre production meeting. He didn't <laughs> like when I hit him with subjects over the top of the head, you know? He wanted to see him coming, and yeah. I get that. So, anyways, I'm trying to make this meeting as quick and as painless as possible for you. <laughs> Because I know he's in bed. He already was asleep. Yeah. So I'm trying to get through this as quickly as possible. But this guy keeps interrupting me with, like, weird questions. <laughs> I was dreaming, man. Like, intentionally trying to slow the meeting down, even though the longer he stayed on the phone, I knew the more <laughs> pissed off you were going to be. You know what I'm saying? So I just wanted to fly through the topics, get his approval, put him in order, and then done. You yeah, can go to yeah, bed. Yeah. And then at one point... After I've gone through all the topics we're going to talk about today and we're trying to put them in order, he goes, hey, what are you wearing? <laughs> and I, I, I think I busted out laughing. I mean, I started choking. I was laughing so hard. And I'm just like, dude, you hate when I take up your personal time with this show. <laughs> But yet you're delaying the hell out of the conversation. Yeah. And then you just asked me what I'm wearing. I was dreaming, man. I know you're not homosexual. You're not gay. So it's just, this is why I love him. He just comes out of the crystal clear blue. And I, I think I explained it last night. Josh's humor is actually really funny. Yeah. You're a funny dude. Yeah, thank you. I just think that you intend to insert it at the wrong time. Yeah, I do that. You know? You're not the first person that's told me that. Yeah, like... The way that you, like, roasted me before the podcast started last week, you were just looking around the room, and everything you picked out, you just leveled me with. <laughs> leveled me with. This guy can do it. But uh, it's just, you know, at that point, I'm trying to start the show, because his time's important, but yeah. he's delaying stuff, you know? So it's just funny. It just seems that you do this funny stuff yeah. at just the most inopportune times. Yeah, I do that at work all the time. I get... Yeah. I get yelled at, I get sent out of the office. All you got to do is figure out the appropriate times to yeah. insert your comedy, and you're going to crush it, bro. Yeah. It's just sometimes <laughs> your comedy doesn't hit as hard because you're inserting it <laughs> like at a time that you know is funny to me, yeah. but you also know you're taking a knife at me. You know it's <laughs> bugging me. That's why you do it. It's one of my flaws. This guy likes to get under people's skin once he figures out what gets under your skin. I'm flawed. All right, dude, I have to ask you this question and do a demonstration for everybody on the air. This wasn't something we talked about last week as a topic, right. but I just want to quickly go through it because it's something that I discovered today. It's something I've been dealing with, and it drives me nuts. I share a recycling bin for cardboard and plastic yeah. with my neighbor. Uh -oh. So today is recyclable day where the truck comes and picks it up. So I went out there with my recyclables, and I went to dump it in there. And I didn't have enough room. And why wasn't there enough room? Because these people put complete broke, unbroken down boxes inside the bin. This is your neighbor? Huge boxes. Unbroken down. Do you, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Okay. You're trying to save if space. Anybody, exactly. Is this a new concept, people? Or am I just crazy? I would have stepped on it. Who puts complete intact boxes into a recycling bin okay 
So <laughs> let me just try to demonstrate for you real quick. Okay, here's a razor blade. Here's the box. Wow. I mean... <laughs> we having difficulties? But I mean, okay, now it's flat. Yeah. Now this works. Now when you put this into a bin, you can fit a lot more. Yeah. Now, aside for the fumbling I did folding it up, how long did it take me to break that box? A few seconds? Uh. I'm just trying to understand the logic. <laughs> is there any logic behind it, or is it just pure laziness, do you think? I don't know. Probably laziness. I mean, it? I did address it with him in yeah. a very nice way, and he's like, yeah, man. You can go hang out with the Christmas tree people. But it's just, yeah. <laughs> If you have your Christmas tree up still, and it's the middle of February, and you put boxes into your recycle bin without breaking them down, please write into the show. I don't care. We just really want to know why. We're, we're fascinated. So, dude, my next question to go into our next segment so, so did is... You, uh, did you get everything to the garbage man on time? I did, but I had to pull out three or four of his boxes or her boxes, which everyone's doing it, and break them down for them so I could fit my shit in. And then I sent him a text and been like, man, dude, it's like seven, six times now since you move in. Uh -huh. I've had to go out there and pull your shit out, break it down to put my stuff in. Can you please start breaking down your cardboard? And he's like, absolutely. Oh, that's good. So I'm like, cool. And so, all right. Yeah, so we figured it out. But it's just, it's, it, it's mind boggling to me. And maybe I'm like this in a lot of ways because of how I was raised. My father, I, I can hear him say it. It's common sense. It's common sense. It's common sense. Yeah. So we just, we had one of those fathers that taught us like, that's how you do shit from shoveling the driveway to how you start a conversation. Yeah. It's common sense. It's com it, all from my father. Good job. But isn't it just common sense? Yeah. You know? I, yeah. I mean, my God. I got a whole dumpster to, of cardboard. Exactly. To work with, so I don't really have to How much more cardboard do you think would fit in that dumpster if everything was in there was flat? A lot. A lot. A lot. How, much, how many cardboard boxes can you fit in the dumpster if you don't break them down? No. Not that many. No. <laughs> it's so mind-boggling to me. That's what frustrates me. I'm glad you're recycling, though. Yeah, dude. I believe in recycling. Yeah. You're saving the planet. Dude, I actually have a recycling topic that we can go right into. We really? can skip ahead to that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm curious about something. Okay. Yeah. And I brought this up to you last night during our meeting, and you're like, mm, I don't know nothing about that. But I that's was, okay. I was probably still sleeping. Yeah, that's okay. Had a I'm wondering why. On my face. I'm wondering why the human population has been dumping so much trash into the oceans. It oh. makes no sense to me. I don't know. And you know me, dude. I'm not one of these liberal democratic activists. You know? I yeah, I know. I don't give to Greenpeace. I'm not trying out I'm not trying to save the whales, even though I'd like to no. actually save them. But you want to try to protect but our I mean, environment, you know? Dude, we've been given one planet as far as we know. And we've just been trashing it since day one. Yeah. You have a kid. I do. Your kid's gonna have a kid one day. Sh their kid's gonna have a kid. Yeah. Long after we're gone. Yeah. What kind of planet are we leaving behind for them? And I'm not trying to be corny or serious here. It's just, but it's like it's a real true story. But here's, here's how I want to try to put it to people. Right. If people don't realize how much trash that we dump into the ocean, go look it up. It'll make you sick. It's a lot. All right. And here's my question to any of you out there that don't realize this is going on or say it's cool. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's say you own a home or a condo. Condo. Yeah. Okay. Let's say you own a house. Okay. Okay. It is, and, it's basically a house. So. Okay, whatever it is. Let's say your trash pickup stops. You can't go to the dump. And, like, all of a sudden, like, all your trash cans outside are full. Mm -hmm. Then you start stacking them, like, in your backyard out of sight. And then, like, a couple years go by. Okay? Yeah. Now you have a whole bunch of trash at your house that's not getting picked up. It's not going to the dump. You have to get rid of it somehow. Okay? Yeah. So let's say Josh's house is the whole planet, and we have all this fucking trash, right? Yeah. Are you, is the first place you're going to think to stick your trash, is it going to be inside of your swimming pool? No. Okay. <laughs> then there you go, people. 
Why, out of all the different methods that we could think of to get rid of our trash in this world, why are we sticking it in our pool? Yeah. That's what we're doing. Basically, yeah. That's that's the best example I've ever come up with, okay? And not only our pool, but we're actually eating stuff right. from that pool. So if you have a home, and you especially have a pool at your house, would you dump your trash in your pool? No. You'd probably bury it in the backyard. Right. Maybe you'd burn it. Or you'd figure out some crazy mad scientist way to get rid of it, but you wouldn't dump it in the pool. So why are we dumping shit in the ocean? It makes no sense yeah, to me. It's, it sucks. It's sickening. You have anything exciting happen to you this weekend? Because I have a whole bunch of shit written down. You, you have a bunch of stuff? Yeah, dude. This, you did something this weekend? Yeah. I, uh... When we had our pre-production meeting last night, yeah. in which you asked me what I was wearing, do you remember what I was wearing last night when you were so intent on knowing? You were wearing... Uh, what was I wearing? And you're like, why are you wearing that? It's like, no matter what I could have told him, he would have been like, why are you wearing that? If I had told him I was wearing pajamas, he'd be like, what? If I told him I was wearing boxer shorts and a friggin' tank top, why are you wearing that? I don't remember, man. What you I said. told you I was rocking sweatpants and a hoodie. And you're like, why? Because <laughs> it's nine o'clock at night and I'm chilling on my couch. You know, what? Yeah. Like, it's such a fucking mystery. Hey. But, but uh, he, Friday, Friday I had a dinner. Friday, Friday I had dinner. Yeah, Friday I had a dinner, and uh, Saturday I did something. You had a dinner, or you went to dinner? I, had, I made dinner. So you had supper? I did, yeah. You didn't have dinner? Supper, whatever. You know the difference between supper and dinner? Whatever you want to call it. I'm, oh, I'm, I'm dead serious. I want to call it dinner. Do you know the difference between supper and dinner? Because I just realized this like a year ago. I know, you told me, and I totally forgot. Yeah. I think supper is when you eat at home, and dinner is when you go out. Oh. So typically, but I don't know. My family's always used both terms. All right. Well, I made supper then. Okay. You, you, you had a supper. Yeah. Okay. By yourself? Yosef? No, I had company. You had company. <clears throat> but uh, Saturday I did something different. Okay. Elaborate. Yeah. What did you do differently, Josh? I had like a, I went to a friend's house and uh, I played a board game that I haven't never play it wasn't really a board game it was like a card game but it was still cool i had never done that before you'd never played a board game before i've played a board game before but not like adults card game stuff like that i played cards like okay so you're saying like that, that you had a game night with another couple yeah okay yeah all right that's what you're trying to spit out thanks and you've never done that before no i never done that before. well i'm glad you had that experience that was great did you have a good time i did well there you go and i understand i my uh my so my social skills is still there, so I, I feel pretty good about that. Did you insert jokes at inappropriate times? Uh, probably. Probably, yeah. <laughs> that's your mo, <laughs> dude. I don't know. I love board games, and there's a board game. I don't know how many years ago it came out that I would still play to this day. Yeah. If uh, you know, we had more friends that would hang out despite COVID. But uh, it's called Balderdash. You ever heard of Balderdash? Yeah. That's one of my favorite board games of all time. Really? I am the master at Balderdash. Instead of picking the correct definition, everybody picks mine. I can make up something that sounds money to whatever that word is. Oh. I love that game. So in the future, if you ever want to have another uh, game night, yeah. let's get together right. with our ladies and we can play uh, Balderdash. There was this game that back in the 80s, it was called Fireball Island. That was one of my favorite games. Fireball Island. Yeah. It was like a plastic board game, but it was like punched out. It had mountains on it. And on the top, there was like a temple with a face. And the hole, there was like a hole where the mouth was. And in the hole, there was a marble. And there was a bunch of paths to get to the, to the top because you had to win like this diamond. Yeah. And then it was cards. So you go like roll three and then you go and you pick a card up. <laughs> and then you move the head on top with the marble. And the marble would come start coming down the path. Yeah? Yeah, and knock you out. It was kind of cool. I like getting knocked out by marbles. Yeah? It's a good time. I'll knock you out. So. Speaking of marbles, <laughs> I was always, I was always uh, partial to Hungry Hungry Hippos. That was a good game. Yeah. Did you like the pink one? I, th I think that's all they had, isn't it? No. I, the, every Hungry Hungry Hippo game I ever saw in the 80s was pink. You look like a pink hippo kind of guy. Dude, the board game was just pink. No, it wasn't. You had pink, you had a blue, you had a red I, hippo. I only saw pink. I don't think I ever owned one. All my friends had them now, but they were all pink. No. But dude, back in the 80s, we weren't conditioned like 
I guess people started to become in the 90s that, like, pink automatically equals, like, gay somehow. That was always the yellow. Have you ever worn a pink shirt or anything pink? Do you have the balls to go out in public, Josh Ryder, in pink? I could do it. I have. I have a pink shirt in my closet. I'm sure you do. Yeah. I don't have any. But I remember back when guys would not wear pink because there was this dumb, ignorant stigma along with it that only gay people wore pink or some shit like that. I like purple. I think that's where you were going with that whole pink uh, Hungry no. Hungry Hippos. No. Actually, I don't think it was even pink at all, motherfucker. <laughs> I think it was purple. <laughs> like Barney. Yeah? Yeah. I think they had a purple hippo. Yeah, it was all multicolored. Cause you're... Saying Barney just made me think of something. What? I love you. No. You love me. Barney gave me HIV. What was the other dinosaur's name? I have no idea. I just know it was Barney. It was green, right? <laughs> I don't know, dude. I didn't watch those things. Neither did I. Uh, it's creepy. Okay, listen up. Okay. Where let's, were we? Let's see if this happened to you this weekend. Okay. Because it yeah, happened you, to me. Let's get on with uh, Let's hear what you have. So, to do. you know, I don't have a girlfriend, but I have a girl who's a friend that comes over. Oh. And we were in the shower together. A friend, friend. You know who she is. You know of her. Don't act stupid. You know I got a slice on the side. Yeah. Anyways, we're in the shower. Okay. What's his name again? Yeah, funny. <laughs> Remind me to hit you in the face after the show. All right. Anyways, her and I are in the shower, and uh, we're soaping each other up. And I was soaping her up. Okay? Yeah. You're lavendering. I was lavendering her up <laughs> with a... Uh, lathering. There lathering you. her up with uh, the fucking poof ball. What the hell is it called again? Not a loofah. Loofah. <laughs> no, it's neither one of those. We don't have one of those. The sponge ball freaking thing with the, you know? So I'm soaping her up. Whoops. I'm soaping her up and Easy there. I'm going down like her back. Yeah. And I'm soaping up her lower back. And I'm, back. Then I'm soaping up her ass and I'm getting into her grundle. And all of a sudden I smell something rotten. Ugh. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I was like, Beth. Did you fart? She's like, sorry, I don't feel well. Oh, boy. <laughs> she fucking farted, dude, in our enclosed shower as I'm soaping up her ass. It Yikes. was silent, and she didn't even tell me at first. I smelt it. I'm like, oh. I'm like, I'm like did you just do something? She's like, I'm so sorry. I have a stomach ache. I'm like, oh, my fucking God. I said, of all the times for you to fart, yeah. you had to do it while I was soaping your ass? Nice. Oh, my God. But the question that then got raised because we laughed about it the rest of the weekend because i couldn't believe she did it <laughs> i mean she's walked in on i mean we've been hooking up for so many years now that like you know she can walk in on me taking a shit or i can walk in on her taking a oh, that's, that's cute man. You, you know a pee she's <laughs> she's held my dick while i've pissed Ugh. have you ever had a girl want to do that um no come on you've never had a girl say what's it like to hold your like dingling as you pee mm -mm. okay all right. Well, then I just gave away a little secret. I've had a lot of women actually hold my pee pee as I peed just because they thought it was neat. They just wanted to try it, you know, because they don't have one. You yeah. know? <laughs> Anyways, so her and I are at that level, right? But that's what I wanted to know. How far into a relationship do you have to be yeah. to the point that you would be comfortable enough around your boyfriend or your girlfriend right. to where you just let one rip? Rip them. Just rip it. Crop dust everywhere. Or you're at your girlfriend's house or you're at your boyfriend's house, whatever you are, and uh, maybe you're two weeks into the relationship and you have a stomach ache. Yeah. You need to take a nasty shit. <laughs> but you know when you get out of her bathroom, it's going to be embarrassing. Yeah. Do you go? Or do you make up an excuse and run home? Because you, cause you're only two weeks into the relationship. Do you want your possible future wife smelling your asshole? Yes. Yeah, Two weeks into dating? That's my point. I have issues, so, how so I gotta... Far, right. I gotta... So how far in do you have to be to where you get comfortable enough to where you can just fart in the shower with your significant other and just be like, yeah, I don't feel well. I, I like the comfy feeling. Well, of course. Yeah. Who doesn't want to get to a point in a relationship where you just can just let one rip and yeah. just not care if she thinks you're nasty? <laughs> you know? I think right away. I think right away is better. Right away? The waiting. I don't think there's a time period on it. I think it's just a <laughs> it's just a feeling. Yeah. 
I guess. We were asked, so I was like, I gave you my opinion. Your opinion is right away. Sure. Because you've been dating a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. I know this is a touchy yeah. subject for you. But anyways, okay. <laughs> In your dating, yeah. have you just been farting around these women? No. Just letting it go? No. Have you ever, you know, okay. So I'm sure you've done like I have when you've been out on a first date and you might be sitting next to each other on the couch and you feel a fart coming on and you got to suck that thing in because you don't want to have it slip out. And uh, let I, it I, was, I was going the other room or go to the bathroom. No, I, I, I hold it in. And if I can't hold it, then yeah, I'll excuse myself and go into another room and just let it air out. But yeah, on that first date, dude, I'm not doing anything that's disgusting her out. I think the scientists came out recently and said that's not healthy to do. Sorry. So you just got to let it rip? Yeah. All right. It's bad for your health. I'll let the girl know. Yeah. You know? Yeah. She was going to be my future wife, but I shit my pants in front of her. And as I pleaded her to stay, I'm like, scientists said that if I didn't do it, honey. Google it. I was going to explode. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to explode like that Chinese guy on uh, Big Trouble in Little China. Exactly. Now, dude, I found out something else this weekend that I need to warn you about. What? Because I think you might want to know this. Okay? Warn me. And it's a pretty serious thing, dude. But, you know, you need to be aware of it. Okay? There's a special nail polish for women now that they can wear. And they can wear it out to the bar or a club or on a date. And they can take their nail, mm -hmm. dip it into a drink to see if it's been roofied. Nice. So now that they have this technology, Josh, you have to be careful. When you're going out to these bars and picking up this women, you got to be careful because there's this nail polish now. You can't roofie girls anymore, I, man. I don't You can't them. drug these women, man, because there's this nail polish. You could get caught. Yeah. So... When I learned about this, I'm like, dude, I got to let Josh know because, like, he can't keep clubbing these women over the head and dragging them all with him. <laughs> Bill Cosby in it? Exactly. That poor guy. The poor guy. But, yeah, <laughs> I think that's an ingenious idea. And I'm happy that they came out with that for women because... There's always room for pudding. Bill Cosby with the pudding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's always room for date rape, too. Yeah. Up until now. Yeah, but that's that's great. That's an awesome idea. That's what I wanted to say about that's it. It's creative. I'm bringing it up to goof on you for a second with it. Yeah, that's fine. Or me. You know, now my chances of taking a woman home are going to decrease because I can no longer roof her. But yeah, they have nail polish. And I guess guys can wear it, too. Guys can get drugged. So they wear it. They put it on at home, obviously. And Yeah, it's just some just, type of nail polish. And when you dip finger. your finger in a drink... If it happens to be like have any kind of illegal substance it in it, changes color. the fingernail will change color. Cool. And I saw it on an episode of that Roswell, New Mexico show. A bunch of girls were out at a bar, and one of one of the girls just dipped her fingernail in the drink. It turned color, and she says, "Fuck, somebody roofied me." And then the other girls were like, "Is that real? Yeah. What kind of nail polish is that?" And they're like, "No, this is this is <coughs> definitely real." So then I had to look it up, and I looked it up, and yeah, it's it's like date rape nail ball. I started watching that show, the Roswell, New Mexico. I didn't really care for it too much. When did you? Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. I just watched the first episode, and I was like, "When eh. did you get Netflix?" I didn't get Netflix. It was I it was at a friend's house, and uh, it was on. I yeah, put it, I put it on. The first episode isn't very good. Yeah, I didn't really care for it. And with the attention span that you have these days for TV and movies and shit. That's not one I'd recommend to you. Well, you if you want to get hooked on a TV show, watch Black Mirror next time you get on Netflix. Black Mirror? Watch the first episode. I think I watched the first episode of that, too. I don't know. I think I had a, something else going on at okay. the time, so I wasn't focused Next on time it. you get on to Netflix, try the first episode of Black Mirror. And if you realize you have seen it, call me or text me, and I'll quickly look it up and jog my memory yeah. and give you the next best episode. So I heard that was like, uh, like a Twilight Zone? Yeah. Every episode's its own little, like, mini psychological thriller. That's cool. And it all has to do with today's technology or technology that's almost here. Yeah. And how it can be used to really screw people's lives up. I like Twilight Zone. That's all I can say. And that's what's great about it. The actors aren't the same. That's all different. It's every single show's different. Are they, like, popular actors? No. I, just random. Yeah, I think it was a Netflix original show that actually originated um, in Europe. I don't think there's a lot of like American actors even in it. Yeah. 
So they all have accent. Like, wow, I just so tried get, to do a British accent and failed miserably. Getting back to this nail polish, is it like... Yeah, it would have been Bill Cosby's worst enemy, man. It would have been. It would have it would have helped a lot of women, though. And that's what drives me nuts, because then we get into these conspiracy theories, like I have, that there's... Like, are you telling me that we couldn't have developed a date rape nail polish back when date rape was at, like, its all-time high? I think you know what I'm saying? It's just, like, I keep thinking that, like, our government and the powers that be keep holding back technology that would revolutionize this entire world mm -hmm. to help it be cleaner... To help it be cheaper for us to afford gas and electricity, yeah. but they keep this shit hidden because they want to use it as a as a bomb or as a weapon against friggin' ET. You know what I'm saying? ET. All he wanted to do is go. Oh my home. god, dude! Why does every conversation I go into, you're like, ET? What the fuck are you talking? about? ET is awesome, man. You know what I'm talking about? Extraterrestrials. Mm -hmm. There's some. Okay, Josh. I know you're not into conspiracy theories, but there's it's a well-known theory out there that we as human beings discovered something called zero-point energy. We yeah. have a device that can literally pull infinite amounts of energy out of the atmosphere. Okay. There's, there's energy, un, there's an unlimited supply of energy just hanging around Earth's atmosphere. And we can pull that energy out of the air in... Apply it. So is that like a Nik Nikolai Tesla's idea? A lot of, yes, a lot. Well, I don't know if it's his idea, dude, but like Tesla's ideas keep popping up even in shit that we supposedly don't have. Not the car. Out in not, 50 years. Not the car, Tesla. The actual. Yeah, the inventor, Nikola Tesla. Yeah. His ideas are still being like experimented with to this day. Yeah. That guy was on another level for how long ago he existed. But yeah, dude, that guy was like part god or like magician the shit that he was doing back then like i said is still being messed with today then, then i think edison came in and like ripped them off yeah dude um bumped them off back in the 1800s tesla was or the early 19th 18th, history lesson. 20th century like the early 1900s tesla was messing with wireless electricity right something that we still really don't have today wireless electricity to be able to just turn on a light bulb that in the power source is the next room over right we don't have that he was doing that like a hundred years ago yeah so that's all my point is dude i want to say 80 90 percent of the country believes that our government or whoever you want to call it has technology that could render this world a lot better yeah but it's all hidden yeah because they want to use it for evil fucked up purposes no they want to Put a stamp on it and sell it so well, they can get the money whatever for it. it is dude it's not benefiting mankind because no, we have we not. have the technology today okay not to go to mars but to go to like 10 friggin' galaxies over mm -hmm. we have the power to get rid of Ew. gas and electricity and give everybody free shit using the zero point energy gas is starting to tick up <sighs> it is yeah, it's just unfortunate, man, <laughs> that we uh, that we can't let this uh, this uh, this technology yeah. become declassified, so we can start using it to help you. Yeah, there's so much energy. I think. I mean, even with our cell phones on, you could hear the energy coming off and interfering with the mics and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, the other day when I did a voiceover here, um, I forgot to turn my wireless off of my cell phone, and you could hear it just crackling yeah. like crazy. I mean, it's static, and it's, yeah. not, it's not good for the system. But so at all times, energy. at all times, we have wireless shit hitting us through the head at all times. Yeah. Like powerful beams of radiation, radiation always hitting We're us glowing. in the head. And then we wonder why we get cancer. Yeah. And that's another thing, everybody. Didn't we talk about this last week? I think like almost 100% of the population all agrees that cancer was cured years ago. I'm sure. But was. they'll never really secure. Why? Yeah. Because treating it is a lot more money yeah. than curing it. Probably. Just like they could Wasn't have likely. came up with a date rape nail polish a long time ago before they did. I wonder what color that changes though on the nail polish. I'm not sure. Does it really matter? I can't. Well, maybe it doesn't match your Like, your let's say you wanted to wear black nail polish. Yeah. I'm sure maybe if you dip your fingers in it, it might turn red, like white. Emo? You emo? No, dude. <laughs> 
I'm just trying to figure out where my co-host is trying to steer me into. Well, what color does it turn? I was wondering. It's not the point. The point is yes, there's a way to deter women from taking a drink in I'm which someone's trying to poison them. I'll Google it after. Okay, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll Google it after. Google. Dude, have you ever had a dog? Uh, yeah, I did. Yeah, you had a dog when, uh, back when I first met you. When, yeah. When we were that was teenagers. In, that was a pain in the ass, dog. Okay. I've come up with a theory, dude, that some people get dogs. It's more my dad's dog. Okay. I've come up with a theory <laughs> that a big reason that some people get dogs is because they want something to punt around the house. That's horrible. And yell at. Why? Because some people are fucked up that way. Are you abusive? No. <laughs> I'm literally two seconds away from pausing this podcast and jumping over this table. <laughs> Why do you have to push my buttons? <laughs> you're supposed to be my co-host. You're I supposed am. to be helping me along. And you, you're, purposely, you're, you're, you're purposely hitting my buttons. I know you're not abusive. Why would, right, pe why right. would people want to punt their dogs around? Dude, it's true, though. You know that there's a lot of people that abuse animals out there. That's Absolutely. why they have the ASPCA. Yeah. Okay? And that's what I'm trying to talk about. There's one thing I can't stand is when people abuse fucking animals because mm -hmm. they're innocent. They don't know any better. They can't fight back. And there's definitely people that exist out there that literally don't love their pet. Yeah. They just are always kicking it around the house chaining it up outside for 48 hours yeah and i i don't get why people do that but i think the reason why they do is because they're so miserable yeah that like i think a lot of these people are single too like if i was a really angry miserable single guy i might get a dog literally just so i could take my day out on it really because some people are that sadistic they need something that they feel like they can overpower that they can bully and pick on because their life just is so messed up. Mm -hmm. I think that's one reason why people abuse dogs. Yeah, and I think a, a, an abuse comes from not being able to take care of them either, like letting them loose, letting them wild, because <clears throat> they can't afford it, you know? That's a type of abuse. Well, that's one type of abuse, yeah. Like, if you're homeless and you have a dog, how good of a life are you giving that dog? Right. But I'm talking the people that have a pet and they keep it around just because they need something to take their day out on. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. That's sick. That is sick. Yeah, it is sick. I hope they don't. Reproduce. You want to hear something else sick? There's a hip hop artist out there. And his name is Lil Poopy. Lil Poopy? Lil Poopy. <laughs> Lil. 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 No. Lil. It's Little. Like Louisville. It's Little, but he Louisville. takes off the... Uh, like the like the like the shortened version of like little lil 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 l i l lil poopy lil poopy. So have you ever heard of lil poopy? No. Do you think that's a good name? Uh, is he like? Come on. How dude. old is he? Like twelve. Lil poopy. If I called you up tomorrow, Josh, and said, "Yo, you, you know all this hip hop I've been doing," you'd be like, "Yeah, all right, I'm gonna rap to it and I'm gonna release it, and my my DJ name is gonna be Lil Poopy." If he's trying to target like a certain age group, like dude, eight or nine, who's he targeting? Calling himself a poopy? I don't know. Do you think? Remember this, dude. We're supposed to be riffing <laughs> comedy here. Somebody's legitimately, like, seriously calling themselves little poopy. Yeah. Like, wouldn't you want to call yourself big poopy? I don't know. Like, wouldn't you want to take a big poop than a little? But why? Why would you call yourself poopy at all? Like. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm gonna I'm gonna call myself Lil Shitstain. Yeah, that's a great idea. Like, when this guy first approached his like friends and be like, "Yo, I've been thinking all week about it. Yo, I finally came up with my name. It's gonna be Lil Poopy." Do you think his friends were like, "Bro, that's ingenious. That's great," or do you think they're like, "Yeah, that's <laughs> Lil Poopy sounds good, man. Yeah, Poopy. Yeah, that's great. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm just, I just, I'm just trying to envision that like thought process. I think there was a, there's been a couple rappers back in the day that had like stupid names, but uh, not necessarily. It's not even a stupid name. It's just silly, Little Poopy. Maybe that's his. What's his mom calls him? Or something. Little Poopy. Yeah. <laughs> He's. <laughs> Hi, I'm Little Shit, and this is my rap album. You know, it's like, dude, if we were to have a new band, 
and I said we're going to call ourselves Big Poopy. I don't know. Yeah, it's not dude, good. I, dude, it's not a good sales pitch. If you guys ever want to know what my audience looks like when I do stand up, it's like twenty Joshes in the audience. Well, be more funny, man. They're all looking at me like, you gotta come up with something better, dude. How is that not funny? It's funny. Knowing there's a rapper out there that takes himself seriously that was like, bro, I'm going to call myself little shit. Little poopy. Yeah. That's not... In okay. Yeah. All right. Next week, you're going to write all the content for this show. <laughs> I'm not a comic. Moving on. You called yourself a comic on last week's show. I did. I was talking about my introduction to comedy and how personally I used to take it when I used to bomb and all that stuff. And yeah. you're like, yeah, I can relate. I'm a comic. I'm a co-host on this show. <laughs> Talk. I was like, oh, I didn't call you out. I'm not I'm like, oh, okay, you know. I always thought you couldn't call yourself a stand-up comic until you've actually done it. Yeah. And had a paying show like I have. I don't want to do that. I have. All right. Even though I'm bad, I can call myself a comic because I've been paid to do a show or two. All right. Uh, moving on. Yeah. Another thing I learned this weekend: Elon Musk is back at it. Yeah. We've talked about him before. Yeah. I think a lot of his ideas, you're like, yeah, that's not a good idea. Yeah, there's a lot of them. That's here's, his, here's his next big a idea. Good ones, though. Here's his next big idea. Sure. He wants to uh, colonize the entire galaxy with humans. Wow. That's a... He just wants to just take the human virus that we are and just spread it across the galaxy. Wow. Yeah, you know? Like human beings, like we're the one that the galaxy belongs to. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be like Star Trek. Think about it. Think about the balls and the tenacity you have to have to be Elon Musk and say, I'm going to choose on behalf of all of humanity that we need to spread the human virus out into the cosmos. Yeah. Like, who are we to say that we just need to spread our shit out across the fucking galaxy? We can start bringing our trash to space and just throwing it out there. Dude, Instead do you realize, ocean. have you ever heard the comparison that human beings are just viruses? Yeah, I, I... We are. We are. If you I look know. at what a virus does, it moves into one area, completely uses up the resources... Spreads. Spreads all its shit out, and then once it's used up every resource and fucked it up, it just moves on to the next place. Yep. That's what human beings do. But Elon Musk has taken it upon himself that, yes, the life force that we should spread throughout the galaxy are humans. Yeah. And we're, we're just going to spread it out. Like you're taking a handful of friggin', you know, seed and just, you know, we'll just throw humans out. A bunch of, a bunch of little poopies <laughs> everywhere. Did you just see that? Yeah. When I did that, my ring fell off my finger and went all the way behind <laughs> the, it's like down behind the friggin' wall there. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, dude, what do you think about that? You think that's a great idea? Uh, you think Elon Musk should have the say that we should just said this, this, it's Elon Musk's job to just spread the human seed throughout the galaxy. Yeah, I don't think that's a good idea. You know? Can we worry about, like, the moon and stuff? Do we even, like, <laughs> dude, like, what's the first, okay, I know that a lot of people are like, dude, we gotta get humans to Mars, we gotta get to Mars. There's nothing there. It's just the dust. In my ball. opinion, we've already been there. We, we went to Mars years ago, yeah. okay? What do you think human beings did? Like, okay, let's say the United States was the very first country to ever set foot on, let's say, Mars. Maybe, right. maybe we were. What do you think the first thing we did is? Because this is just human nature. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the nature of a lot of countries in this world. Mm -hmm. I bet you the first thing we did is stuck an American flag in the ground and said, this shit's ours. Yeah, yeah probably. Photo op. Who says that America owns Mars? Or who says it belongs to the human race? Is, is my point. Like, right. Who are we or who is Elon Musk to decide that we're just going to spread humans out throughout the galaxy and be like, Saturn's ours, <laughs> Neptune's ours, we're going to land on the sun and put a flag in the... Oh, United States owns the sun. Yeah. You know, who are we, dude? I don't know. Who's Elon Musk to make these decisions is my point. It's cool that... Any... any Give me feedback, Josh. It's cool that he's trying to wants to go experiment and like see. But here's the what's deal, out there dude. and stuff like Elon that. Elon Musk's in a, in his SpaceX. He's a, they're like on the same like level as NASA. Yeah, NASA's a front. Do you realize that? Right. We didn't go to the moon on Apollo, whatever it was. No, it was NASA. Because we we went to the moon twenty years before the Apollo missions. NASA and everything they've done is just a front company to keep the status quo. What the government really uses is all its black projects. Mm -hmm. 
black budgeted projects like yeah. the, like the five billion dollar project called uh um f uh senior year all right this is a whole new area for me yeah that you're putting me in dude every single year the defense department releases its annual budget and you will see projects on there that don't have any description one of them is called uh senior year and they've spent about 20 billion dollars on it and that's supposed to be our latest greatest um inter stellar vehicle yeah that they're using that money for the project name is called senior year that's what they call it yeah and it's a top secret aircraft that looks like a ufo that travels to other galaxies wow. we've been doing that for the last hundred years <laughs> they say since the 1930s i thought it was the 1950s that we that we mastered anti-gravity technology mm -hmm. it's actually the 20s or 30s that we did it you ever listen to a uh, so that's my point dude we keep flying around yeah. in these aircraft like jets and uh, we keep taking rockets to the to like the the space station, right? When we literally have the technology, even though it's secretive at Area Fifty One or whatever, to get into a craft and then two seconds later you're at Mars. So NASA is just doing all this as like a pony show, and Elon Musk not be privy to all these black projects because the shit he's developing mm -hmm. is like now technology. Hmm. Remember what I told you? The founder of Area 51 and the, and the head owner, the CEO of Skunk Works, you know Lockheed Skunk Works? No. Lockheed Skunk Works is the division of Lockheed Martin yeah. that develops the stealth fighter in these UFOs that we have now yeah. under black project names, hmm. like the senior year, where there's no limit to the amount of money they can spend. There's no congressional oversight committee saying that you, that we have to, you have to show me this by this date. Yeah. It's just unlimited funding. Hmm. And uh, what was my whole purpose in this, Josh? I don't know. My you're, whole purpose is You're that, sounding like George Norrie on Coast to Coast AM. Yeah, well, <laughs> hey, maybe that's the show I should get. But no, dude, I've always felt like like the world that gets presented to us yeah. was like a curtain, so to speak. Like there was a man behind the curtain. I felt that way my entire life, that what we've been told happened in our history was only half the story. And what we're being t Okay, Skunk Works. Was what I was talking about. Skunk Works. The guy that oversaw the SR-71, the F-117 stealth fighter, the B-2 stealth bomber, the UFOs, all that stuff. Yeah. The head of Skunk Works said on his deathbed, and I've told you this before, that we have shit right now flying around that we made that far exceeds anything you've ever seen on Star Wars or Star Trek. That's cool. We have space cruisers, dude. Phew. Like you would see on Star Trek. Yeah. And that's what pisses me off is the fact that like we are so far beyond in our technology, but we're not putting any of it to use hmm. to benefit mankind other than these elites one percent, you know, hey, you want to go to Mars this weekend? Sure. Meet me at Roswell. <laughs> all right. You know, it's like I want a Rosie from the Jetsons. That's all I want. So you're saying you want a mate? No. You want a mate robot? I need a vacuum cleaner. I need I don't have a vacuum cleaner. How do you vacuum your house then? It's I got wood. It's, it's do, laminate do, floors, do, so I, mean, I was just caught. I just use a broom, mop, a broom. Yeah, dude. Who? What do you? What do you? What do you live in a workshop? Yeah, dude. We're gonna, we're gonna, nobody sweeps their floor anymore. They vacuum it. They sweep it, or they swiffer it. It's my exercise, dude. I have hardwood floors. Yeah. I still have to vacuum them. All right. I, I, I first vacuum the hardwood floor, and then I'll swiffer it with the wet <laughs> mop. I used a swiffer. I can't believe you don't own a vacuum. What? What if you spill a bunch of shit on the well, ground? You don't vacuum it up? Like, I what eat, do you do? I eat at the table. And I, if I make a mess, I sweep it with my hand. Like I just did. With yeah. The yeah. Microphone. Yeah. And then everyone's <laughs> speakers, speakers explode. No. It's awesome. No. All right, Josh. All right, John. We, 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 we. We're going to wee, wee all the way home? I, <laughs> wee, 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 wee. We're friends. Wee, wee. <laughs> oh, who used to, was that Porky Pig that used to do that? Wee, 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 wee. I don't know. Wee, wee, monsieur. Um, we were talking about this last night when you were asking me what I was wearing, but uh, we were talking about this all-female band from the 80s. Remember that? Who were they? There was a bunch of female bands. There was, dun, 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 there was Vixen. Um, 
The Bangles, I think it was. The Bangles. Right. Yeah. They're the band that came up with Walk Like an Egyptian. Yeah. Right? Walk Like an Egyptian. They're one of my favorite bands. So I was watching a... uh, Little brunette singer. She's gorgeous. She's tiny little. I was watching an episode of Black Mirror, and uh, one of the episodes was set in the 80s. So that song came on, and it had been years since I had heard Walk Like an Egyptian. And I instantly went to my podcast notes, and I had to write this down. I wanted to have a discussion with you. Mm -hmm. And I think we had this last night on the phone, and it didn't go too well. So it probably won't go too well now. (laughs) But the the funny, goofy conversation I want to try to get in with you right now for the show's sake is, do you think when the Bangles came up with that idea, just like Little Poopy, do you think they were serious? Well, probably. They were just looking for something to grab a hold of. Like, dude, okay, you and I used to be in a band together. Yeah. What if I walked in and said, guys, we're going to do a song called Walk Like an Ethiopian. Would you guys be like, whoa, man, that's deep. That's a market. And then, like, in the video, (laughs) we're like, walk like an Ethiopian. Probably back then, I probably would have agreed with you. But, uh, no, I don't. But, no. dude, honest to God, if I'm a female in that band in the 80s and, like, the singer walks in and goes, guys, I have this real great song. It goes, dun, 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 walk like an Egyptian. It's fun. And do Egyptians really walk like that? Can you do it? Because I can't get my camera to pick well, me up. Hierogl- do it to the camera. What is the walking like the Egyptian? Do you remember how to do it? It's like this. Yeah, it's like walk. But, uh. I, the camera shows me backwards. I can't get used to looking at myself. I just, everything's reversed. Literally. I just did it. Yeah, walk like an. That's not it. Is that how Egyptians walked? Well, in the hieroglyphics, like. In, yeah, but that's that was just a pose. But I don't think well, when they, they walked like, down the road, they, they look, went like this when they walked. Like you know, it's like, come on, man. What? They were. This is gimmick. It's the eighties, man. You, but do you think you they like, were? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think they were serious? No. Do you think these chicks were like, dude, that's heavy, man. Walk a, like an Egyptian. It was a fun song, and they sold a lot of records. Do you think if Walk Like an Egyptian came out today, Egyptian people would be triggered by it? No. I don't think it would be allowed to happen in today's day and age. They'd be like, what do you mean, walk like an Egyptian? What are you trying to say? We walk weird? Yeah. Because Egyptians don't walk like that, <laughs> Just because a couple like pharaohs were in that pose on the side of a wall. It's good exercise, though. Doesn't mean an Egyptian, like, every time they walked anywhere. Like, I'm going to the bathroom. <laughs> like, <laughs> you never know. You, we weren't there. They could have. Uh, What's your favorite uh, Bengals song while we're on it? Dude, I don't know the Bengals well enough. What? Dude, I probably recognize every one of their songs, but to recall a band that I never bought the album to or had their tape from the 80s and just remember all their songs. I couldn't do it. Uh-uh. The only Bengals song that I could think of off the top of my head right now would be Walk Like an Egyptian. Uh-uh. Um, yeah. I like uh, Eternal Flame. In Eternal Flame yeah. Close your eyes Give me Give, give me, me your hand That's too, uh, Darling There you go. Can't you s- what? You got it. Can't you see I've been no. dreaming? Can't if you'd understand. If you don't, you just screwed it all up. For something me like that. Yeah, that's that was a, a good, good song. song. It was a good song. Yeah. So if the lead singer of the Bangles walked in and said, "Yo, I got this heavy song. It's called Eternal Flame." I'd be like, "Yeah, that, that sounds deep." It does. And then she's like, "Yeah, I got this other one. It's called Walk Like an Egyptian." Had, like, <laughs> Walk like a what? They had the Venus song. That the VSR Venus, like the planet Venus. Yeah. It's like a shaving commercial for women shavers. Josh. What? I'm saying your name right now. Josh. Josh. The Josh that's listening to this podcast right now while he's driving his truck on a Thursday. You hear me? I do. Rewind the podcast a little bit and go back to when you said VF whatever it was. I and said, you're like, no, I didn't say that. I said Venus. Yeah. You're not listening. It sounded like you said whatever I said. Just go back and rewind it. I just wanted to make that little sound bite there so you could go back. I murder my... I. I murder some words. What? I murder some words. I'm you sorry. You murder some words. Yeah. I do. I mummer. And, Maybe you know. that's why I'm having nightmares. Because, like, just like you with the teeth falling out. <laughs> because when I'm looking at you, this is the only time I see you each week, and you're actually hiding behind a windscreen and a microphone, just like you're wearing a mask. So maybe that's why I'm, you know, everyone's having the teeth falling out. 
yeah. dreams. You can't read my lips? No. Are speaking you deaf? Of, Are you deaf? Speaking of nightmares, dude, we're running out of time quick here, but uh, why are you giving me the finger? Because <laughs> you're deaf, so I was doing some sign language. Oh, I was trying to read because I'm the host and I got all the you know notes in front of me trying oh. to lead the show along. Lead away. I'm sorry. Did I miss something you Leader. said? No. Because we are getting late in the time. No, right? I was giving you sign language. Okay. Because you're deaf. What, what did you say? Huh? What did you say that I didn't what hear? What did you say? <laughs> what did you say? I don't remember. Yeah, you do. Oh, well, okay. Well, <laughs> when I go to edit this podcast tonight, I'll realize what he said, and then I can choose to get angry then. Yeah. <laughs> Depending on what it was you said. Uh, yeah. Let's let's end off on what we were just talking about. Last week we were talking about how millions of Americans are experiencing the same nightmare. A nightmare having to do with teeth. Teeth or your teeth falling out. My, my and a lot of experts think the reason why a lot of Americans are sharing that dream is because that we've been looking at each other with masks on the last year and it has something to do with the teeth missing. If that's what you want to believe in. I've had, it, I've had those before though. Yeah. Before the masks. Okay. But mine's different. Mine's not like they're falling out. Mine's like kind of like a mashing. Like somebody's like breaking them with like a... That could be a precursor to me punching you and breaking your teeth. No. <laughs> no? Not like a shattering. No, but it made me think of um, a nightmare. I used to have... Well, I, I used to have two nightmares that were very reoccurring when I was a kid. And I haven't had them since then. One, I can't really even describe because it wasn't as much as a nightmare as it was of like a feeling mm -hmm. and i can't really even picture in my head how i would describe it to somebody mm -hmm. but the other nightmare i used to have used to happen all the time and uh haven't had it in years but uh the bedroom where i spent most of my youth had a walk-in closet the closet was huge yeah and um i was a little kid that closet scared the hell out of me it was a big sliding doors in my bedroom to get into the walk-in closet and um i would have this recurring nightmare where i would wake up i would be on my floor in my bedroom on my stomach mm -hmm. unable to move complete darkness and all there was was a light on in the closet and you could see the light coming from under the door mm -hmm. and i was on the ground looking at the closet knowing there was something evil in there wanting to get me i couldn't move couldn't scream it was one of those dreams where you'd try to scream because I'd know my parents are in the next room and you don't make a sound. I would have that dream almost nightly. There wow. was something about that closet that made me literally fear it. And you woke to up? To this day when I go in my parents' house and I have to walk in that closet, it just gives me the chilly willies. It's like the sixth sense. Yeah, it's weird. I know my parents' house isn't haunted or anything. There was never anything in there. But right. It's just I had a fear of that closet growing up and it ended up manifesting into a dream that I had many nights. Hmm. Where I would wake up sobbing. Hmm. Yeah, it, it scared the hell out of me. Did I, you have any dreams as a kid that really messed you up? I did. And I, I, uh, you, I didn't remember it until you, you said this was going to be one of the topics, possibly. And uh, yeah, I had a messed up dream. It was kind of like a uh, Nine Inch Nails video today's. It was, it was messed up. Like I would be sitting underneath the, the table. And the, there would be a tablecloth on the table, so it was drooping over, so it's kind of be like a curtain, you know? Yeah. And I would be sitting with this other body, but the body, the head, was like a buffalo head. Ooh. And he was, like, eating ears and stuff like that. It was messed up, like, ripped off ears, and he was just, like, eating them. And how old were you when you were having this? Oh, I don't remember. I was a kid. Kid, kid. Yeah. I think I first dreamt it. I... But you had it enough to where now that you're 40, you still remember it, like I do. I think I've only had it like a couple, like maybe two or three times, but that was a long time ago. You know, if I was your psychologist or psychiatrist, yeah. wh whichever one you talk to, I think they're both the same, but just one can write prescriptions and one can't. Isn't that the right? Uh, I think they all can write prescriptions now. No, I think one of them, a, a psychiatrist and Not a psychologist, I, I think do the same thing. They're both therapists. Right. But one has the authority to write prescriptions and one doesn't. Okay. Anyways, if I was your psychologist or psychiatrist and you were messed up over that dream, I would have a couple ideas on what might have given you that dream. Yeah? Yeah. All right, Dr. John. When I first met you, we used to jam at uh, a house that somebody in your family owned. I can't yeah. remember whose house it was. And I want to say that you had 
farm animals in the back of the house, did you not? Yeah, we did. Okay. So you kind of grew up with like farm animals yeah. and kind of out in the sticks. And uh, We've always ma- had farm maybe animals. that's where the buffalo head and the ears come it was from. A buffalo head, though. Because didn't you have like emus and stuff? <laughs> oh, so, boy. like, you grew up around Don't... like exotic, like farm animals. Don't get another emus. And <laughs> you remember the time that you told me that McDonald's hamburgers were made out yeah, of emu? Yeah, meat? I told you that. Yeah. I told you that before. And I think I believed it for a minute. Yeah. Because I don't think McDonald's uses actual meat. They can't. They've sold over like what? 20 trillion burgers at this yeah. point. Remember when it used to say millions and millions sold? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then it went to billions and billions. To and this, now it just says a whole hell of a lot sold or whatever it is. To this day, I'm still known as the emu kid from that place. Yeah, I never got to see one of your emus. <laughs> nah, dude. I just heard them in the back. Yeah. <laughs> What's, okay. <laughs> like, do you remember those round things that you'd like, like uh, kids in the 80s, maybe 70s had them round things they were made for like two-year-olds to help them learn like farm animals They're like a learning toy so you would like put the arrow on like a horse and you would pull the oh, string yeah, and yeah. it would go this is a horse and a horse goes and it was like wheel of fortune and it would go around yeah whatever and it land on what sound does an emu make because i've literally never seen one they, but, they chirp but i remember hearing them in your backyard they, they look like a big ostrich to me they thump though which is awesome it's an awesome it's they like hump a, they thump like do they hump like a drum like a bass drum that's what they i don't know i didn't really ab- come on you got emus I'm, in your I'm, backyard i'm sure they did. do they lay eggs or do they, they or, or are they mammals no nah, they lay eggs okay big then, fat eggs I, oh sh- <laughs> dude you are a fucking wreck tonight i love it i'm tired you're always tired i'm doing like 12 13 hours at work and then i gotta drive an hour to come here. Let me ask you something. Because there's a difference between coming home tired from actual, like, a 12-hour physical labor shift and then, like, a it's eight-hour shift where all you're doing, dude, is driving. It's mental. It's all mental. I know it's mental. And it's just drained. I know. But at least... It's kind of like me, dude. My job isn't physical. It's completely mental. Yeah. I have to look at my screen for my job and be able to save people's money and security and shit. But anyways, there's nothing physical about it. It's no. It's just mentally draining. Yeah, it's really draining. But I think you would be more tired if it was more of a physical job, wouldn't it? Absolutely. And I've had those. Like, what if you were a carpenter and you're, like, building a house all day out in the 20-degree weather? You'd probably be a lot more tired. Yeah, probably have a hell of a tan, too. Yeah. But you do realize that we can record (laughs) this show on, like, a Saturday or a Sunday, right? Yeah. When you're not so tired? Yeah, but that's my my adult day that I got a grocery shop. Your adult day. Yeah, I forgot this podcast is an adult. No, but I got laundry I got to do. Oh, I gotta go shopping. I have to do laundry too, brother. I gotta go to all. And my, I have to go shopping. I gotta go to my craft stores and do some crafting stuff. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. Why do you spend so much time going to craft? I stores? like craft stores. I think some... you secretly knit or crochet at home, don't I... you? Is that why you're always going to no. Bed Bath and Beyond and I like Joanne Fabrics and <laughs> Hobby Lobby? You're, uh, a, you're a hobbyist. I like to decorate, so I like. I bet you like build like. Like little crafts and knickknacks at your house, <laughs> don't you? You're one no. of those guys. No, I'm not. You probably like secretly like knit or crochet I, or like quilt. That's probably a good hobby to get into, though. My mother used to be able to quilt and crochet like yeah. no one's business. My mom does it. I think that's a lost art form. How many women these days, or even men, do you think now know how to knit or crochet? I don't know, but it's I a, mean, I could sew something. I think it's a dying, dying hobby, though. I wonder if they still teach home economics in uh, no school. They don't. No, they don't. I'm, they stopped home economics? I never had it. They stopped it in my high school. You didn't? Well, I didn't have home ec in um, high school. My, I had it I had it in junior high I school. Think, I think mine was the first year that I had it. We had no. it in 7th and 8th grade, but we didn't have it in like the high school, the 9th through 12th grade. But we had home ec in 7th uh, and 8th grade yeah. where, where we'd cook, we'd bake, we would sew, like hand sew and then use sewing machines. Yeah, my, it, it was basically a class to know how to be a homemaker, I guess. Yeah. I think my year was the first year that they didn't have, they didn't offer that. Why aren't we teaching kids these skills, people? Because they don't. They need a, they need a computer skill. No, they don't. Yeah, they what do. are they going to do when they go off to college and like they have to make 
spaghetti. They're not going to know how. They're, like, no. my father literally doesn't know how to make spaghetti. They'll have to Uber. Because his wife, my mother, literally cooked for them from the time they were kids up until she passed. Yeah. So he didn't even know how to cook spaghetti. Yeah. Didn't, not- didn't know how to operate the laundry uh, machine because yeah. my mother did it all 60 years. You know what I'm saying? So it's like... You kind of have to be self-sufficient, people. You don't want to have to rely on other people. So yeah. I don't know why we're handicapping kids, so to speak, by taking away skills that they're really going to need in the real world. Right. I mean, I'll be the first to sit here and admit, dude, that the only thing that you need to learn in school to be successful in life, basic math, the ability to read, and the ability to write. Hmm. That's all you need. Teaching you about philosophy and the periodic table of elements. If you're going to be a scientist, that's great. That's all stuff you learn on the job and in college. But I'm talking about school, dude. Yeah. It's good to know not to lick batteries and stuff like that, though. That comes from life experience. They didn't have a... Yeah. yeah. I don't think they taught that in my science class, uh, Josh. They, no. they, they taught me not to burn shit with a Bunsen burner. Yeah. And I got taught that by being sent to the principal's office. Yeah, we very rarely did the Bunsen burner. Oh, dude. (laughs) I can't imagine that schools do that shit anymore. No. Because you give a bunch of us Bunsen burners like we had in the 90s, the first thing we would do is start to try to light shit on fire with it. I'll give you a dollar if you put your hand on it. Exactly. So we'd start waving our hand over it. We'd we'd take a piece of paper and light it on fire, not even thinking about how the school could burn down. You know? We just just didn't give a shit. No. And maybe that's why they don't have home ec class anymore. <laughs> maybe they're afraid someone's going to end up like, like, we, ba- like baking weed brownies instead of a bunt cake. We had a Spanish teacher, and she we get her so flustered. And she's she starts speaking in Spanish. She'd be running around. It was funny. She's a good teacher, though. We have to save that for next week because <laughs> that just jogged my memory of taking Spanish in sixth grade and the type of abuse me and my friends would give our Spanish teacher and some of the kids in the class. We would use our Spanish skills to our advantage. Oh, oh dude. Save it for next week. I was a bully. Save it for next week. I was a little bit of a bully. Save your bully for next week. I'll have to save my... uh, Yeah, you can cancel me next week, people. All right? Um, (laughs) I hope you've had a good time. I have no idea if this episode was worse than this last week. I can't imagine it can't be worse than last week i don't know uh, we're trying our best here people good. it was good we're trying our best here people we have bad weeks we have good weeks we've been having more bad than good but that's why i love it because i think you can watch this show and be why do these guys continue to do it i think that's the funniest part it's like we're so bad at this it's like people have to watch us and be like that's what's funny about this I'm, the I'm, fact that it's so bad I'm, but they keep doing it i'm good you're bad <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah all right <laughs> He's Josh, and I'm Johnny. Yeah, that's right. And this has been episode 72. If you folks are still somehow listening or watching, if you could hit the subscribe and the like button on Apple or Spotify or YouTube, wherever you are, that would be greatly appreciated. Once again, I'm John, and he's Josh. And this has been episode 72 of the podcast. We'll talk to you guys next week. Adios. Remember to tune in, because I'm going to talk about how I bullied in my sixth grade yeah. Spanish class. He's a bully. A little bit of a pre, uh, little bit of a sneak he peek. Still is. A little bit of a sneak peek. What? There was a kid named Chris that all of us kind of picked on, and he cried a lot, and he would bring in a pound puppy with him. Pound puppies are good, man. But, dude, you don't bring a pound puppy in sixth grade to class when, so you're, a, when you're a boy. It's, I, I, dude, it was the 80s, man. I had a Cabbage Patch kid. And you would bring that to school with you? No. And, like, hug it in sixth grade? No. Okay, what would have happened if you did that? Your, 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 your male friends would have made fun of you, would they not? Oh, I always this was the 80s, I dude. got made fun of anyway. Okay. In sixth grade in the 80s, if you're a dude and you're bringing in a stuffed animal with you to school, yes. you were going to get lit up. Yeah. This kid's name was Chris. So his name in Spanish was uh, Cristoba. And uh, one of the first learn, uh, words that we learned in Spanish was baby, was uh, um, bebe. Bebe. Is, Bebe's kids. Yeah. So we'd always go, Cristoba bebe. <laughs> <laughs> Cristobal's a baby because he'd always cry. Uh, but we'll get into that stuff next week. How I mean, I know. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm no. I was gonna say something, but no, I'm not going to hell. You the devil. I'm not going to hell. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to hell. I'm. I, I, I'm going to heaven. No, I am. Maybe. No, I think I am. All right. Even though I've done some bad things in my life, I really want to say that when I get judged upon my death. 
and I think we all do. Yeah. I think when we die, one of the first people we see is God. And he's going to ask you, how did you live your life? Do you think you made an impact on this world? And he already knows the answer. And he's going to be able to see right through you. This stuff's horrible. And I'd like to say that I think I've done more good with my life, and I've done... I think I've done more good in my life than bad. Let's just put it that way. I gotta take a piss. Any type of bad I've done in my life had the best of intentions. Yeah. Okay. All right. Is what I'm trying to say. That's great. Once again, I'm John and he's Josh. See you later, everybody. See ya. <laughs> you got to tilt your head back for it. Oh, what the fuck? Open your eyes. I'm, they're fucking open. Ah, you got it. Open it. Ah, you missed it. I know, because you keep shutting your right, eyes. I got it. I got it in me. Well, well, most of it missed. But... Uh, you got it all over me, John. Dude, because you kept shutting your eyes. You're just like me. Uh, Instead of keeping your eyes wide open, you start closing them like I am. You're a fucking pussy. It, just like me. You blew it all over my face. That's how I roll. <laughs> When I blow it, I blow it all over the face. I'm crying. You made me cry. We both cried. It's a sad story. It's a sad fucking show. We haven't even started. I know. Oh boy, look at me on camera. I'm a big boy.